<laughs> so recording myself. Yeah, so welcome everybody uh, to my little talk about unit testing Joomla core. I think that's the missing word. I realized that afterwards, but uh, so if you expect uh, that I will tell you anything about testing Joomla extensions, uh, this is your last chance to leave because I'm talking about testing the actual core. Um, my name is David. Uh, I'm from Cologne, a lovely or not so really lovely city in Germany. Um, I'm uh, part of the Joomla community since Mambo days, actually. Um, and in Cologne, we uh, have a really awful local beer um, called Kölsch. Um, Kölsch is served in really tiny glasses, um, uh, 0.2 liters. Uh, so you need a, a bunch of them at once to come forward. Um, and because beer in Cologne is so awful, um, I travel a lot, uh, at least I try to do. Um, and of course, uh, if I can, I travel to Joomla events. Um, this one is uh, Joomla Day Netherlands, um, the, the group photo at the beginning. Um, and that's me, obviously. Um, yeah, and I'm here uh, to talk to you about something that really drives me crazy, um, that pisses me off, that uh, costs me a lot of nerves. Um, and this is that. Um, those are all version numbers of back-to-back -back releases. I think uh, um, one of them uh, was an, an update uh, for an update that uh, was released three days before, and all the other ones are uh, updates that are either released on the same day um, or one day after the actual update. So we have a history with that. Um, a small one, um, and I only look back look back um, until 1.7 or so. I think in the in the past there are even more, um, and so we we need a solution for that. And um, I got interested in that topic and decided to join the automated testing working group. Um, a few of those guys are on this picture. In the meantime, uh, we got some new guys. Um, and uh, this picture was taken at the uh, unit and system testing code sprint in uh, November last year, I think. Was it November? I'm not sure. November, October. So, so, so somewhere. It was cold outside. <laughs> um, and the guy in the middle um, with uh, a lot less hair than I have, this one, that's uh, Sebastian Bergmann, um, the uh, developer and maintainer of PHP unit. Um, and he told us a whole lot of stuff. And my motivation for this talk is to share all the stuff that I've learned during these three days. Uh, so you know them too afterwards and can start making Joomla better together with us. October. As I said, it was cold. Um, just a really, really tiny theory vlog because I'm pretty sure you heard those theory things at least a dozen times uh, during the last days. Um, imagine you have a car. I love car analogies. Um, the one type of test that Joomla does right now is the unit test. Um, it's testing one single part of our code in isolation. And um, the, the basic idea behind this, if you test each and everything in our code in isolation and it works, the whole thing together has to work too. So in our car analogy, a unit test would be, let's test a single light bulb. Let's make sure um, it works. It lights when the power is on, and it doesn't light when the power is off. Um, and the second type of test that we are using in Joomla is the so-called system test, or functional test, or acceptance test. There's, um, there are different types of tests, and the, um, the barrier between them is not really a hard one, so uh, they, they, uh, they uh, get into each other. Um, a system test is the the, uh, the kind of test that tests a lot of stuff um, at the same time. So you put all those pieces together and make sure that they work. Um, it's like taking our car to a test drive, testing all the components at the same time. Um, in Joomla, um, the first thing that came up was the unit testing setup. And um, this one is based on PHP unit. Uh, a really nice piece of software written by Sebastian. And um, in Joomla's uh, 
in Joomla's folder, um, we have two files and folders um, that are uh, responsible for that. Um, in order to get them, uh, it's necessary to check out the, uh, the version from GitHub. Um, it's not included in the normal zip package or the tar archives um, that are on the, on the download page. Um, the phpunit.xml.dist, that's the configuration file, and the actual tests are located in the tests folder. Um, the XML file, um, yeah, lots and lots and lots of configuration stuff. One particularly interesting part is the database configuration, um, because uh, there are unit tests for the uh, different database drivers too. And uh, in order to test the database driver, you obviously need the database. Um, and so that's the place where you enter your database credentials. Yeah, and besides that, we have a few uh, test suits. Um, so we, we group unit tests um, together. Uh, for example, you can uh, run all the uh, tests for the uh, CMS libraries uh, by running the libraries minus CMS test suite. Um, and uh, one side note on performance. Um, per default, if you run the, the unit testing suite, um, it's fast enough for most things. Um, the, the one step that is pretty time consuming is uh, the generation of the coverage files. Um, uh, you get a, a nice overview of which lines are tested and which ones aren't. Um, and if you don't need that because you just want to run the test suite and get a result, uh, you can comment out those lines here and then it runs way faster. So, that was the configuration file and um, the actual tests are located in Joomla CMS tests unit. Um, hmm, sorry? Uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> wow, that's me. That that that's how <laughs> that's how humans are. Um, and um, in order to run the the, the test suite, um, you need some preparations. Um, you need obviously a, a local AMP stack. With if you use, uh, yeah, I think it's not even necessary to have the A in there. Probably runs on Engine X2. Uh, so what you really need is uh, PHP and uh, MySQL or another database that would help. Um, and uh, it is a good idea to tweak a few PHP ini settings, um, especially the memory limit. Um, you need to put that one up real high, um, especially if you run the uh, coverage reports because those are pretty con consuming uh, when it comes to memory. Um, and uh, in order to be able to run the whole test suite, you also need the uh, PHP modules uh, SQLite and uh, curl, because those are used for, for a few of those tests. And you need PHP unit. Um, PHP unit is uh, distributed as a FAR, as a self-containing PHP archive. Um, if you're still using the one from, uh, what was this thing called, uh, the here, yeah, this composer in earlier days in Ugly. Yeah, um, uh, Sebastian stopped distributing PHP on it on Peer, so don't do this anymore. You don't get the recent versions. Um, and that's it, basically. Um, then you switch into the uh, directory that you checked out, hit PHP unit, and then it runs the test suite. Um, running the test suite looks like this. Um, you might notice this little gap in between. Um, that's just to get it on one slide. <laughs> so that's the jump. Um, each and every dot is one successful test. Um, we've got S's here in between. An S is a skip test. We've got R's. R's are risky tests. And the really bad ones that are F's, which is a failed test. Um, that's the meaning of those. And uh, at the end, when all of these things um, are done, uh, you'll uh, get a summary of what happened. And if there are any failed tests, you also get uh, the uh, exact name of the test that failed and also an information uh, what happened. <laughs> On a side note, um, during uh, our testing uh, code sprint with Sebastian, uh, we found actually two bugs in PHP unit. Um, one bug uh, caused uh, a wrong count of tests that have been run. 
Um, so we had, uh, I don't know, uh, 6,000 tests off, 5,600 tests run, uh, which are 108%. Um, and he fixed that during our sprint. Um, one thing that uh, really opened my eyes during the testing sprint was uh, best practices for testing. Um, because uh, Sebastian took a look at our test suite and uh, really ripped his hair off. Um, because we're doing a lot and a lot of bad stuff. Um, imagine we want to test this class. Um, it has a really stupid method um, which checks if a string is an int. If yes, it returns false, and if not, it uh, changes it to uppercase and returns the result. So we need a test for that. This is how most of Joomla's tests look right now. We have a class called original class name test, extends the default test case. Um, the method name uh, of the test is test, and then the name of the original method, in this case, bar. Um, and then we have two assertions in this test. Bad. Rule number one, only do one assertion per test. So we would split this into two tests. Um, rule number two, we need meaningful names. Test bar one and test bar two are not really helpful. Um, we need those names uh, because um, if you run the test suite and something breaks, exactly those test names are popping up. And um, in our current testing suite, you would get information like test jcontroller legacy one failed. Thank you. That's really helpful. So you would have to check out by yourself um, and with more meaningful names, it gets a lot better. Um, so that's what proper test names would look like. Describe what the actual test is testing. The upper one, Make sure that the method is doing that what it's supposed to do, uh, converting it to uppercase. And the second one, make sure that the false is returned when we provide an integer. And uh, that's also one, uh, use the most specific assertion possible. Um, PHP unit has a whole bunch of assertions. Um, for example, in this case, uh, we used, I think, assert equals. Yeah. In the current test, we use assert equals, and now we use assert same. The difference between assert equals and assert same is the same like uh, um, uh, the Gleichzeichen, um, and in German here, help me. Equal sign. Equal sign. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's the same like a double equal sign and a triple equal sign in PHP. So assert same is type safe. Um, and uh, the same applies for assert faults, which was also an assert equals before. Um, there are tons of those assertion methods, and it's really worth the time to look in there. Um, there's stuff to handle, um, all kinds of stuff with arrays. Um, I think there's uh, stuff to test for exceptions and all kinds of things. Really dig in there. And last but not least, um, I think I realized in the meantime that one of those parameters is um, deprecated, but doesn't matter. Um, if you run your test suite with strict and verbose, um, you get a lot more useful information. For example, PHP unit has a, um, a function um, to tell you if there are any tests that don't actually make an assumption, so that are just empty. And, uh, when uh, Sebastian ran the test suite for the first time, there were literally hundreds of test methods in the Joomla code base that tested nothing. They just had a to do, to do in there. Um, and we also, uh, this also tells you about uh, risky tests. Um, risky tests are those uh, yeah, the tests that don't test anything and a few other things. I need to look that up. Um, so this gives you uh, much more detailed information Downside is that it's um, a bit more performance uh, cons uh, that you don't have a, that you have a bit more resource consumption, but it's it's definitely worth. 
And last but not least, my favorite feature, test docs. Um, if you run PHP in it with the minus minus test docs argument, um, you'll get this fancy list of stuff that is actually tested. Um, the default one is uh, we uh, PHP unit converts the test name um, and uh, adds a space before each capital letter. And that's the, the test docs uh, description. Um, if you need a more meaningful one or a manual one, um, it's also possible um, to add a add test docs annotation directly in the code. So that's what I did in uh, JModel Legacy. Um, that was my contribution. Three days of testing JModel Legacy. Um, don't get me started. Um, one thing that one has to know when running the test suite with uh, minus minus test docs. Um, this is just to get some, some pretty output. If you run your test suite with minus minus test docs, you don't get any debugging information. Um, so if you have a, a test with a fatal error in it, you don't get an error message. This little tiny piece of information costed me one and a half hours because I was hunting a bug in my test code and running the test suite with minus minus test docs all the time. Yeah, um, nice one. Side note, something I stumbled upon while preparing this. Um, AngularJS bug tracker, they have a unit test that fails when it was run in Australia. Love that one. Um, story behind this is that uh, this specifically a test um, is testing something in uh, connection to uh, time zones and date time. Um, and uh, I think the, the exact story was that uh, they're converting a specific time, which is before 1970, um, into a different time zone. And it works all over the globe, but not in Australia. Because in Australia, and also in New Zealand, uh, if you scroll, if we could scroll down, we could see that there are a lot of people telling them, it breaks for me too in Australia, and in New Zealand, it, it doesn't work either. Um, because in, in those uh, two countries, um, before 1970, they didn't have a daylight saving time. And so the time zone offset doesn't match, um, but really, great story. I think it's fixed in the meantime. Um, that's unit testing. Um, unit testing is, is a great thing. It's very convenient. It, it runs pretty fast. All cool. But there's one downside. It doesn't really work in Joomla, um, at least uh, with our current legacy code base. Um, as I said, I tried to test JModel Legacy. Um, I have a, a pretty different idea about fun, to be honest. Um, <laughs> and that applies to a lot of code that we have right now. We have all those static calls to, to different classes and methods, and that's the direct opposite of what you want to do in unit testing, right? You want to do test one code piece in isolation, and with all those static holes that you can't mark, um, it all blows up. Um, so we need a, a different way of, of testing Joomla um, without refactoring all our code, which would be a good idea anyway, but different story. Um, and those are system tests. Um, Joomla is using uh, the Selenium WebDriver API for that. Um, Selenium is a, yeah, a, a way to automate stuff in browsers. And um, the actual test suite is still run by PHP unit. And PHP unit uses a Selenium client written for PHP to communicate with the WebDriver API. That's the most recent version of Selenium. And the WebDriver API then communicates to the browser and tells the browser, click on that button. So pretty interesting stack. Um, all those tests are located in test system WebDriver, and uh, thanks to our uh, lovely group members, um, the test suite is, is growing really fast right now. I think you merged the, the WebLinks test a few days ago. Yeah, thank you. Um, when it comes to, to running the system test suite, um, it's not that easy, because you might realize that you need a lot of stuff in order to execute it. You need PHP unit, that's a pretty easy part. P 
PHP itself is also not too hard. A browser should be present, but um, Selenium is a piece of Java and Java is nasty, so that doesn't really fun. And um, you need to add the matching browser plugin, and it needs to be able to communicate with Selenium in its specific version and with the API and all those kind of things. Um, not really fun. Um, and so what we did, uh, and those of you who uh, visited Robert's session yesterday, you already talked about this. Um, we uh, set it up a Docker container. Um, Docker, in a nutshell, is a, um, a way to, uh, to, to package a service um, in a virtual machine that can be booted up really fast. Um, the difference between a normal virtual machine and Docker is that uh, Docker containers use the kernel and all those modules and a network stack and all those kind of things of the host machine. And a normal virtual machine uh, has to power all of this stuff up by itself. And so Docker containers um, are much better from a performance perspective. Um, and uh, we packed all of those necessary stuff. So um, a LAMP stack, Selenium, the WebDriver API, a headless browser, and all those kind of things in one Docker container. Um, which is uh, available on GitHub. Um, you can clone it, you change the directory, and then uh, let Docker build the actual container. Um, this stuff has to install once to build a container, and then uh, you can run it very conveniently. Um, and if you do so, uh, you tell Docker um, to run uh, the uh, um, the which is, oh, exactly, no. Huh. I think I copied the wrong call. Um, you tell uh, Docker to, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, uh, oh, so, yeah. Uh, on a side note, Docker requires Linux. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's that's also a Mac port, but I think it, the 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 really nice way is running out on Linux machine. But don't worry, I've got uh, good news on the end, uh, so it gets easier. Um, you then tell Docker to run our container, um, and uh, the Docker container accepts uh, two arguments. One is the repository that should be checked out. And the second one is the, the branch that should be checked out. And the Docker container then uh, fires up, um, starts a local web server, uh, checks out our repository. In this case, I cloned the Joomla-CMS repository from GitHub. Um, it boots up uh, a local browser, a headless one. It starts the Selenium server. Uh, it hooks up all those stuff. Um, and then finally starts the actual testing suite. All of this is run in one container. And when the test suite is done, um, the Docker container uh, shuts itself down and you're able to copy the result out of the container. Um, now uh, to the long-term goal, or hopefully not so long. <laughs> um, our goal is to, to automate those automated tests. Um, we have a unit testing suite, a system testing suite, um, and the current situation is that we already automated the PHP, uh, the unit testing suite, because you have this nice little piece of software called Travis running on each and every pull request and commit and telling you if you fucked up or not. Um, and our goal is to have the exact same thing for the system testing suite. Um, but the system testing suite has one downside. Um, it takes quite some time. Um, depending on the machine, between two and ten hours. And so uh, that's uh, uh, where our lovely sponsor One and One kicks in. Um, one and One sponsors us um, four, three, a bunch, a bunch of pretty powerful machines. Um, each of them, I don't know, 24 cores, so the uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM and those kind of things. It, it's okay for these for the start. Um, and our and our goal is um, to set up a, a master-slave setup uh, with uh, Jenkins. We have one Jenkins master, um, which constantly uh, tracks the official repository, 
um, for pull requests and new commits. And each and every time one of those kicks in, um, it tells one of the Jenkins slaves run on the other machines um, to boot up a new Docker container. And um, the idea is to have one Docker container um, installing Juma, so running the system testing suite for the install part, and then running the system testing suite for the article manager. At the same time, simultaneously, having another Docker container installing Joomla and running the weblinks testing suite. So we, uh, the, the idea is to power up a lot of machines simultaneously and um, let them run just a piece of the system testing suite. Um, so we get the result much, 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 much faster. Um, that's the idea. The Docker container is in place. The machines are in place. Uh, Jenkins is working. Uh, the only thing that is missing right now is uh, connecting Jenkins to Docker and actually letting stuff boot up. Um, that's Robert's part. Um, and he was a bit busy during the last days. Um, but I really hope we have this up and running pretty soon. Um, yeah, and that's Travis, as I said. Um, That's my conclusion. We need you, because right now uh, we have a, a pretty good system testing suite that has some performance issues. We have a pretty awful unit testing suite that has some coverage issues. Um, and we have even more awful quality issues um, that should be solved as soon as possible. Um, and we have a make it happen session this afternoon. Yeah. Um, if you are interested in contributing code about uh, unit testing code, uh, helping out with the Docker file, um, if you're familiar with Jenkins and are able to help us with that, um, if you have any other idea or just want to hook into the group, let Javier know um, after the session, um, and then we'll kick this thing going. And then hopefully the future looks a bit brighter for you. So, thank you. Any questions? Yes. Um for the unit test, it's pretty easy because we have this coverage report, and you can uh, you get a list of all the uh, in this case I think it's all the the libraries within all the files within the libraries folder, and you can just click in there, and then you see a list. Okay, this file is tested, uh, and you even can click onto the file, and then you see that a specific line in a specific file hasn't been tested yet. Um, so for the unit test, that's pretty easy. For the system testing suite, I'm not sure if we have a list. Javier, that's your part. Uh, we have a report that is generating automatically when you run the, the test, but we have this whole suite of system tests based on the web driver. We are, we are switching to the new way of conception, so we are somewhere in the middle of switching to a new version. We, we can publish. This report is somewhere really deep. Yeah. It only took me 20 minutes to find it. <laughs> Developer.junior.org. Come on. Who's responsible for that awful Wi Fi here? Yeah, I need to talk a word with him if I see him. Now, in, in tests are both the unit tests and the system tests. Yeah. <laughs> 
maybe you can you can check this part out uh, after the, the Q and A session is done, or this afternoon when you all show up. Um, any other questions? Um, I think covering your own extensions with unit tests um, is pretty hard. Um, you would probably uh, rebuild a lot of stuff from scratch because even if you if you um, do some fancy stuff and use the the I container, which makes testing a lot easier, you still in some way are based on on Joomla's functionality. You're extending Joomla's core classes and um, it's, it's hard to avoid the actual calls uh, to the Joomla libraries. Um, I wouldn't say that it's impossible, but it's hard. Um, so for uh, testing extensions, um, I think the, the, the system testing um, approach makes more sense to, at least with the current code base, um, set up Selenium Suite. Uh, there's a, a nice tool that we are migrating With unit tests, yeah. yeah. As I said, if if you, you you could test parts of your component with unit tests, but I think to get a a, a bigger a, a bigger a better view of the big picture, um, system tests make more sense for for components. Um, and uh, there's a, a nice helper tool for that um, called Codeception, which lets you write um, Selenium tests with PHP in a pretty convenient way uh, with a nice API. Um, in this case, it tells the browser to um, go to a specific page, click on two buttons, and make sure that it sees the text new page. And if it doesn't seize it, um, the test is broken and fails. Um, that's one approach. But I think there was a session, or is a session, on that you did one eh? yesterday? Yeah, it's already online. Applause to the video, guys. <laughs> okay, any other questions? No? Okay, then, thank you. Have lunch. <laughs>